What's up y'all, it's Timmy and today I'm gonna give you a much requested tour of my 16 by 20 cabin. So let's get into it. So I have had a whole bunch of requests from you guys to show you my 16 by 20 cabin I built with my dad. So we're gonna do that today. So everyone here has seen the truck house. So this cabin I built in 2018 with my old man. The cabin is pretty small. It's 16 feet by 20 feet and it's three stories tall. The bottom story is basically a nine foot tall storage area. Safima and the municipality required me to build this cabin at least nine feet above the ground level for floods. So that's why it's up on really tall stilts. And if you guys notice over here, this is a 20 by 24 poured concrete pads. So we poured this back in 2018. And this is where my main house is going to be whenever we build it, which is hopefully next summer. And uh, it's gonna be a little bit larger. So the rental cabin you see here is 16 by 20. This other house is 20 by 24. And it's going to have a dried in basement downstairs with a concrete slab and heated floors. So it's gonna be a pretty sweet spot. It's also going to be a shed roof style, so it's gonna look very different. So with the Muni code, I actually have to have my main house and my rental house connected. So you guys can see this 10 foot hallway that's already sticking 10 feet out from the rental house. It's going to meet up with another 10 foot hallway to the main house, which will connect both the houses together. So it essentially will be one house. This isn't a very large piece of property. It's only a little over an eighth of an acre. But the sweet part is it's completely flat and gravel. So the entire property is usable. All the other houses in the neighborhood are painted a certain color, but I really love the look of clear wood. All the wood in the exterior of the house is oil stained and waterproofed with an oil based stain essentially. So it keeps it pretty waterproof. And since we live in a temperate rainforest, I definitely wanted to do a metal roof up top. The cabin feels a little bit top heavy, but it keeps me out of the floods and keeps me high and dry if anything were to happen with the creek swelling up or the ocean swelling up. The main floor of the cabin has a living room, a spare bedroom, and a bathroom. So let's go check out the inside. I know you guys wanna see it, so let's do it. And right out there is the creek, so I'm basically the closest house to the creek. And the ocean is literally right out there, so I'm basically the closest house to the creek and the ocean. Pretty sweet spot. You don't have a view this time of year as much because these alders grow in thick in the summer. But in the winter, when all these leaves go away, you can see straight across all the huge mountains over there. Pretty cool. So let's go inside. Excuse the mess, but here is the Arctic entryway. I'm gonna close this door, give you a better idea what you're dealing with. So this is the 10 foot long hallway and we extended it a little bit wider so we have an Arctic entryway. So there's a place for shoes and all kinds of crap down there. Ramen, stuff like that. Little stacked washer and dryer, which is sweet. Gotta love it. Store the vacuum right here. If you never had one of these Dysons, they're freaking incredible. It's worth every penny. And then basically just a whole bunch of outdoor gear storage for stuff we don't want exposed to the outside. And we also have a chest freezer full of salmon and caribou and other delicious stuff. Got some of my band speakers down there. Here's an old article from 2000, back when my good old buddy, Obi Jenkins, paddling in LJ, Georgia. 
And without further ado, let's go inside the cabin and check her out. Oh yeah. There she is in all her full glory. Now keep in mind this cabin is only 16 feet wide going across and 20 feet deep. So this is a really, really small space. This is smaller than most people's living rooms. So everything you see in here, I've managed to somehow squeeze it into a 16 by 20 cabin. And keep in mind, this is the rental house. This isn't my permanent home. So I built this to rent out, which is going to pay for this house and my house beside it. So I don't have rent, it's the whole idea. So there's a couple things I didn't do in this cabin because I want it to be safe and not have a bunch of problems. So I did not do a wood stove or a fireplace in here. I just have three natural gas heaters for the heat in here, which is really efficient, really safe, and uh, keeps it super cozy. Full discretion, you're probably gonna hear some parakeets because I have two parakeets, which I think are chilling upstairs. So we'll go see them in a minute here. You guys can see my banjo on the floor because we're playing music this weekend, but usually I have my banjo and ukulele and little bass uke right there hanging up, ready to play. So this is facing out to the mountains. And like I said, in the winter time, all these leaves are gone and you can see straight out the view out there. So it's pretty gorgeous out there. It's big old mountains, full Southern exposure. We get awesome sunsets and all that stuff, sunrises. Aaron is obsessed with plants. So we have ourselves a little plant collection. And of course, below the bird cage is all the liquor. Erin actually made this table. She's a very talented little woodworker. So she did that. And then we made this granite table together. Works pretty well for this space. Got ourselves a pretty cozy leather recliner right here. Picked up for a hundred bones. We got a nice hardwood floor here and a big old rug to make it cozy. A couple little ottomans down low and a coffee table. You can see this is where I do most of my editing, just sitting here on the couch. Over here we have the classic fridge freezer. Got that on sale at Lowe's. So you notice I don't have an ice maker or any fancy stuff because this is a rental house. I don't want anything to break. Look at that big old steak down there. Looks good. So keep in mind the living room area is only 12 feet deep and 16 feet wide. So this is a very small space to work with. I searched everywhere for a six foot long couch that would fit in between the spiral staircase and the edge of the wall right there. So it's not a large space. Over here is the kitchen. This kitchen counter is approximately five and a half feet long. So once again, not a lot of room to work with. Just enough to store some cups over there, some stuff we don't use as much up there. And we've got all the dishes stored up above the microwave there. We also have cabinetry down low. So it's just enough space to come up here and cook what you want to, which I'm about to cook some bacon. Just enough space to wash dishes. You guys, stop screaming. Holy crap. Look who decided to join us downstairs. I like the camera. See, going to their little second home up there. Rest of the kitchen, it turns out when you get a mini oven, this is small, it's only 20 inches wide, it's a freaking fortune. But natural gas is pretty nice, does the job. Very slim, long microwave, I like that. All the essential coffee stuff. Right here is pantry storage. Not a lot of room. There's also the pressure tank for the well in here and a fan system that blows hot air under the house to keep the pipes from freezing. And now we're gonna go into the bathroom. And keep in mind this bathroom is only five feet wide by six feet wide, so it's tiny, but we're trying to make it feel as big as we could. So walking in, let me hit a light. So here's what you're dealing with. You got a fairly small shower. It's a 36 inch shower, but cozy enough. Get yourself a nice elongated toilet with a bidet, that's right. And a uh, medicine cabinet over here. Another medicine cabinet over here, fancy one. I got this sink for free on the side of the road. I figured I couldn't turn down a free sink, so I went ahead and did that. It's pretty cool lighting fixtures up there. View out the bathroom window. Not too shabby. Big old mountain. Oh, how about that? Here's the new Sony a7 III camera setup. All fancy, I just got this gimbal so this footage should be super smooth. Let's turn this light off and step outside. And now we're going to go into the guest bedroom. So this guest bedroom is only 11 feet by 10 feet. And there it is. And it is extremely messy right now, but you know what? I'm not trying to hide anything. So this is a nice, huge 
extra full size bed, super cozy. And we'll get some wooden beam action up there, some track lighting. Even though the room's only 11 feet by 10 feet, it feels big because the ceiling is nine feet tall. So that helps out a lot with that. Over here is Erin's slave area, the work area. This is where she absolutely slaves away. Ooh, slide guitar, that one's kind of fun. And then once again, right out the window, awesome view and a cell tower, which ironically we don't get great reception. You get another view out this window, probably kind of hard to see because of the sun. All right, let's cruise back outside, back into the mainland. So I don't know what you guys think, but I think this is pretty doggone good for a 16 by 20 cabin to have a decent sized bathroom, decent sized spare bedroom, and a decent sized living room. So I don't know, I think it worked. Once again, I tried to do everything I could with the space that we had in here, which is really small. And keep in mind, this is just the rental house, so we're not permanently living in this. Now it's time to go check out the extra messy loft. So we have a loft up there. It is approximately 16 feet by 12 feet. And that is the master bedroom up there. Now one really cool part, and I came up with this idea in my head, since it's going to be a rental house, people are gonna be moving in and out a lot, and they're gonna to need to get their bed and furniture up there. So this knee wall in the loft up here, it actually folds down. That way you can hand stuff up real easy to the upstairs. And the loft wall folds back up and clicks into place. Hey, birds, what? You guys are so freaking loud. And this is a photographer that took this picture right out in front of her house, basically right in the ocean. So pretty cool. Old guitar hanging on the wall. So without further ado, let's go upstairs. So it actually took my pops and I exactly three months to build this house, almost to the day. And we were working our tails off, working every day, and we just knocked it out fast as we could. So I drew up the initial design of this cabin and the floor plan and just told my pops pretty much what I want, what I'm looking for for the rental house and for the main house. And uh, he is just a little master carpenter. He's never done it professionally per se. He just builds for friends and then it got out of control and he started building for lots of friends. So he's made a lot of cabins over the years for himself and for friends. So he's got a lot of experience and uh, really good at just naturally figuring things out. So I'm super stoked because I was able to learn everything I know from my dad and that's how I built the truck house out there. That's the only reason I was able to build it is because he uh, he showed me the ropes when I was building this cabin. I helped my pops out when I was a teenager a little bit, nothing too crazy. I'd help like stain boards and uh, hang up some siding, do just a little bit of framing stuff, like nothing crazy. And uh, yeah, I just learned everything I know from him. So so thanks dad, I, uh, I don't know. I really appreciate it and uh, I don't know, this video is dedicated to you, man. This wouldn't be here without your help. <sighs> okay, sorry, I put the birds up there being so freaking loud. So the whole idea about building the rental house here was so that I could rent this house out and it will pay for this house and it will pay for my main house that I'm going to build right beside this. That's the idea. So essentially I'll be rent free and down the road when the house is paid off, it'll kind of be a little extra retirement. So I thought that was a fairly wise decision, I suppose. My pops and I built this house back in 2018 and we're supposed to build the main house the same year, but quickly realized there's no way that was gonna happen because we get a really late start building this house. And so we're going to build the main house the next summer and something's basically happened every summer. So I had loan problems in 2019, 2020 COVID hit and my dad broke his hip in 2021. And uh, now there's uh, dad's got some other health problems, unfortunately, but he's working through them. And uh, there's just been basically a delay uh, for the past four years. So hopefully we'll get it. So hopefully we'll have this new house built next summer in 2023. And I can move all my stuff out of here and start running this out and just uh, really get that our house set up like I want it. This house was the rental. It's a little bit small and I'm a little bit cramped in here just because I've got a lot of construction materials downstairs to build the main house over there. And uh, yeah, I just like to get uh, established over there. My main reason for building in this ski town in Alaska is it's really difficult to find a place to rent here. I just figured it would be a really good investment to build a rental house in a place that's difficult to find a place to rent, if that makes sense. So that's why the house is here. I looked around a long time for a town that I wanted to build a cabin in and this just hits the mark. It's close enough to Anchorage where I can drive there and commute every day for work. 
and uh, it's a small enough town to just feel small. Absolutely beautiful. A ski resorts down the street. I've got a lot of really good friends here that I've known for decades, and uh, I just I love it here. All right, let's go upstairs, shall we? So as you guys can see, this is the smallest spiral staircase made. Super tiny. The treads are 24 inches, so two feet wide. So it's just enough for an average sized human to walk up. You even have to twist sideways a little bit. So let's go upstairs. Once again, excuse the mess. So this is the master bedroom. As you can see here, I've got a bunch of paper storage and whatever, but this is my dropping folding loft wall. So you just unhook these latches and this whole loft wall folds down. And then whoever's running the house can hand beds and furniture up here to the loft and bring the furniture in and then lift the loft wall back up. Full size bed over here. This is the weekend and I've got some friends coming over to spend the night. So this, uh, I just put that mattress pad there for now. So they got room downstairs. Got these lovely views. Aaron made these lovely curtains. Move up and down nice and easy. Pretty cool. As you can tell, there's an absolutely beautiful view right out the window. So this is, this is what we're dealing with. Here's the ocean right there. Pretty sweet. And then out the bedroom window, this is north facing. So you can lay in bed with your head on this pillow and you can watch the northern lights right up there in the mountain line. Pretty sweet. And Aaron also made these little coffee tables right there. Here's the crazy vlog camera again. The height right here is right at six feet, so I can't quite walk all the way to the wall. I think it's five foot seven all the way at the wall. But that's why we pop these dormers up so there's room to stand in here. Over there, it's closed right now, but that's a window looking across the street. A little bit of clothes storage over there, and there's storage behind the clothes for summer or winter stuff when we swap it over. I love sitting in bed and just looking at all these different angles, the roof angles and everything in the house. And you can see right here, this is another one of Erin's fantastic doings. She made these custom curtain rods and sewed these curtains up so you can close this in. And they're blackout curtains so it gets totally dark in here in the Alaskan summer. And uh, yeah, it just gives you some privacy from people downstairs. Over here, you have an office area which is full of crap right now. There's actually a little working desk there. But right now the bird cage is there and all their crap's right there. So, and the cool part is when you're sitting at this desk, you get this view. You've got this view right at your window. Not too bad. Little funky hand lamp. These funky lights. That's essentially it. So, looking down onto everything. That's your space you're working with. Small but cozy. Definitely enough to get the job done. So I guess that concludes my tour video of the cabin. Uh, don't have much else to say. It's, it's a cabin. I know this video has been a long time coming, but I do hope you guys enjoyed the tour of my little Alaskan cabin up here in the ski town. If you did enjoy this video, smash that like button down there and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of my content. And you guys know I usually do adventure videos, so uh, we'll see what's coming soon. Peace, y'all.